Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Shabu 
Is my sound audible? It is audible. It is audible. It is audible. It is Yanandasya, Sarvetamsa, <laughs> Paditanam Bhavani Bhu Vaishnavi Bhu Namaha Jasya Krishna Chaitanya Bhunya Nishri Advaita Gadadha Shiva Sarigod Bhattarunya Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Rama Once more Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. We are continuing the fourth chapter, Transcendental Knowledge. So can I, like, would anybody like to share what we discussed last time? 
I remember discussing the link between third chapter and fourth chapter. Does anybody remember what was the link? What was the connection? Yeah, anybody else uh, apart from Prabhjit Prabhu? Ravi Prabhu or Pragya Mataji, you remember? The connection between third chapter and fourth chapter? Uh, I mean, I can try. Uh, third chapter is basically about karma yoga, doing karma, because without karma, you cannot exist or survive. And fourth chapter talks about um, transcending the mode of uh, nature, doing the work uh, without thinking of fruits and all, fruitative mm -hmm. work. There is no fruitative work. There is okay. nothing like fruitive work in fourth chapter. Fourth hmm. chapter is only about transcendental knowledge. Like there is no like giving of fruits or anything. Hmm. But third chapter is about karma yoga. So, so in the last section of third chapter, what does Krishna discuss? Nobody knows what was the third last section of third chapter was. Krishna explains about lust, I think so, and where does lust exist in our body, and uh, we should control lust at, at the first stage itself because it is the biggest enemy. Such things are, I mean, being told by Krishna in the last section of the third chapter. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, right. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, in the last section, last words of the third chapter, Krishna says, by regulation and detachment we can control lust. We have to cultivate regulation and detachment. And the best way to cultivate regulation and detachment is, is to cultivate transcendental knowledge. And that transcendental knowledge is will strengthen our intelligence because intelligence is above the mind and mind is above the senses. So the lust is right now sitting in the senses, mind and intelligence. So we have to spiritualize our spiritual intelligence and make it strong. And the best way to uh, keep the intelligence strong is to associate with Krishna conscious devotees and cultivate transcendental knowledge. Yeah. Prabhupada, what do you want to add? Yeah. Yes, Prabhupada, in the fourth chapter, we had a little bit of time. Prabhupada, it was that if someone is unattached, there are three modes of material nature. And they are fully situated in transcendental knowledge. So, Prabhupada, it was a little bit of time. 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 Prabhupada, it was a little bit connection <laughs> कलेक्शन तो मर्जिंग तो कहीं नहीं लिखी है मैं इसलिए कह रहा हूँ आप आप हैंड रेस करते हैं लेकिन तो यू शुड बी कॉन्फिडेंट डेट यू आर नोइंग द राइट थिंग तो मुझे हमें दरअसल भी आपने पूछा कि कुछ मतलब कोई और शेयर कुछ करना चाहता है तो हमने उसलिए हैंड रेस करा था ये हमने लास्ट टाइम डिस्कस किया � ठीक है थैंक यू थैंक यू प्रभु बट स्पेसिफिकली जो रवि प्रभु कह रहे हैं वो मतलब पहले मैं वो कह रहा था कि व्हाट इज़ द कनेक्शन बिटवीन थर्ड चैप्टर एंड फोर्थ चैप्टर डेट इज़ द कनेक्शन इज़ दिस डेट बाय कल्टीवेटिंग ट्रांसेंडेंटल नॉलेज वी कैन वी कैन कॉन्क्वर लस्ट बिकॉज़ लस्ट इज़ सिटिंग इन दी माइंड एंड इन दी सेंसेस एंड इफ वी कल्टीवेट इफ वी मेक अवर इंटेलिजेंस स्ट्रांग बाय एसोसिएटिंग विद कृष्णा कॉन्शियस डिवोटीज बाय हियरिंग फ्रॉम देम एंड बाय कल्टीवेटिंग ट्रांसेंडेंटल नॉलेज then basically the lust becomes conquered. First words, Evam buddhe param buddhva sanstavya atmana atmana jahi shatru mahabhav kaam rupam dhras. So in the fourth chapter, Krishna is describing transcendental knowledge in detail. So the first section of fourth chapter is the first four verses where Krishna tells that he has already given this transcendental knowledge to various other people, various other devotees in the past. And now he is giving it again to Arjuna. Why? Because 
the previous disciple succession seems to be broken and then he explains uh, that it is because of because of the brokenness like yoga nashta parantava that the transcendental knowledge doesn't exist now so that's why he has chosen arjuna to receive the chance this transcendental knowledge again saiva mayate bhakto sime sagar ki rahasya mein ata lagta so why why did he choose arjuna anybody yes prabhu yes go ahead Guruji is a friend. Uh, Arjuna is a friend and devotee also. Bhaktos Vinay Sakha. Yes, Bhakti also and Sakha. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So when when uh, yeah, you should not uh, like uh, you should not leave. Uh, you should not skip trying when there is some scolding or anything. You should keep trying. I think we heard that in Chakti Charu Maharaj's memories also. Like sometimes Prabhupada used to scold him, but he always used to approach Prabhupada again. He never gave up. He was not dwelling in his negative emotions. Oh, I am so bad. Prabhupada has chastised me, or my spiritual master is so harsh. He is not doing thinking like that, but he is just taking it uh, as part of the process and purification. And then again, trying to search for uh, Shiva Prabhupada. So we should continue uh, being enthusiastic of answering, asking questions. So then, after like Krishna is explaining that right, he has already given this knowledge and he is giving it again, then Arjuna asks this question: that how do I understand that the that Rivaswan, who is senior by birth to you, he has received this knowledge uh, from you? So then <clears throat> Krishna says that there are so many words which you and I have taken, but you don't remember any one of them. But I remember. So this is an eternal journey, basically. It is not a matter of one lifetime. So whatever propensities we have developed from our previous uh, births, whatever devotional inclinations we have, because of that, we we engage in different limbs of devotional service. Sometimes somebody likes hearing, or somebody likes DT dressing, or somebody likes to do DT worship, or somebody likes uh, reading, like understanding shastra very nicely. Somebody likes prasadam. So different inclinations are there, and whatever inclinations we are carrying from previous birth, we should just cultivate them, and we should be aware of our weaknesses, and like slowly, slowly those weaknesses will go away. Just by feeding the good dog, the bad dog will automatically it will be reduced. Yeah. Krishna Sri Sama Maya Haya Andhikar Yaha Krishna Vahane Maya Radhika. So this is called Gona Bhakti. Like we are just cultivating what what we like, and uh, by dint of that we continue our sadhana. But a higher level is when we surrender to our spiritual master and Kim Kara. Basically, whatever spiritual master says, we follow. We are not doing only those things which we like, but we we get gather energy from from those things which we like, and then we invest in those things which in those services which we don't like also. For example, I don't like doing any temple services, but still, uh, as a matter of service to Shilo Prabhu. As part of initiation uh, vows, I should engage in temple services, <clears throat> or I don't like uh, dealing with my family members in a serving mood. But but as a part of grahastha, I should serve them. So there are many things which we don't like, but uh, still we should do. That is that is a part of purification, and there, then our spiritual life will be very wholesome. We will grow spiritually very fast. There will not be any uh, any obstacle. Because obstacle is there in our mind, like uh, sankalpa and vikalpa. Sorry, uh, acceptance and rejection, right? So mind says, okay, I want this, I don't want this, I like this, I don't like this. So everything is residing in the mind. But when the mind is purified, then everything is like every service is Krishna conscious. Like everything, can, every service can connect you to Krishna consciousness. Brahma Buddha Prasanna Atma Na Shur Chiti Na Kamchit. So mind is not hankering also. And mind is not lamenting also that I didn't get this or I don't have that devotee association. I didn't get that much uh, preference from the senior devotee. Or, or mind is hankering. I want I want to eat. 
I want to eat in a five star hotel. I want to go to clubs. I want to associate with that Mataji. So like this hankering is there. Mind is not satisfied. But when uh, mind has been purified, then basically this sankalpa and vikalpa that goes away. Like he is happy with whatever little Krishna gets. He understands that he, as a spirit soul, he is a servant of Krishna, and like our department is service department and results department is Krishna's department. So whatever results come. He is happy and satisfied with that. Yeah, the richa lava santusto that we also discussed last time. So, like this, Krishna is explaining now in the next five verses that what is his nature, how he descends in the material world. When does he descend? Uh, anybody remembers why does he descend and what is the nature of his uh, body? Pragya Mataji, you want to answer or Rakshat Prabhu? Am I audible or? Prabhuji, you are audible, but your voice is breaking a little. Like, sometimes it fades away. It, it is breaking up here. Yeah, like it fades away in between. Okay, okay. Now I think it will not that will not happen. Yeah. Okay. So my question was that when how does Krishna descend? When does Krishna descend and what is the nature of his body? Anybody? Now it is okay? The voice? Yes, Prabhuji. Okay, you want to answer? You are taking a lot of time. Okay, let's continue with the 24th verse. I think instead of getting so much time wasted 25th verse devam eva pare yagyam yogina paripasate brahma agnam pare yagyam yagye naiva pajavvati so this entire section is about how like people cannot live happily without doing sacrifice and sacrifice can be of various things sacrifice can be of like your your uh, your speech, sacrifice can be of your bodily comforts, sacrifice can be of your material possessions, sacrifice can be of hearing directly transcendental things. So without doing sacrifice, or sacrifice can be of charity also, giving charity to brahmanas and God protection. So without doing these sacrifice, we cannot remain happy in this material world. Because ultimately, we, like we are getting everything from Krishna. So if we don't pay back the debt, which we have towards the demigods, towards the sadhus, towards Krishna, then we will not be happy. Mentally also we will not be happy and like in the future we might uh, experience some blockages in the, in, the, in the opulence which we receive. Okay. <clears throat> so some yogis perfectly worship the demigods by offering different sacrifices to them and some of them offer sacrifices in the fire of the supreme Brahman. Shrotradini Indriani and Ye, Samyamagni Shujuvati, Shabdadi in Vishayan and Ye, Indriani Shujuvati. Some the unadulterated Brahmachari sacrifice the hearing process and the senses in the fire of mental control, and other the regulated householders sacrifice the objects of the senses in the fire of the senses. So, even this hearing which all of you are doing, that is also a sacrifice. And controlling senses by, with the help of mind. That is also a sacrifice. Repeat the word. The members of the four divisions of human life, namely the Brahmachari, Grahastha, Vanaprastha, and Sanyasi, are all meant to become perfect yogis or transcendentalists. So actually, Prabhupada was giving this lecture on Vyas Puja that. 
every grahastha should be a first class paramhansa if you see all the grahasthas in gaur leela they are more than sanyasi that if you see adivata acharya or shrinivas acharya <coughs> or uh, what do you say that forgetting his name yeah so many grahasthas are there cool uh, pundrik vidyanidhi he is very rich also and he is ecstatic so everybody should be trained in such a way that they become perfect paramansas and transcendentalists since human life is not meant for our enjoying sense gratification like the animals the four orders of human life are so arranged that one may become perfect in spiritual life the brahmacharis are students under the care of a bona fide spiritual master control the mind by abstaining from sense gratification A brahmachari hears only words concerning Krishna consciousness. Hearing is a basic principle of understanding, and therefore the pure brahmachari engages fully in Hare Nama Nu Kirtanam, chanting and hearing the glories of the Lord. Temple room, Takur, Takur. Yeah, go there. Oh, there are many different. So I am. Yeah, sorry for the interruption. <clears throat> so human life is not meant for sense gratification. Nayam deha deha bhajam niloke kashan kama narade vidu jamge tapo divyam putra ka yena satvam bhram shadye diasma brahma sokhyam tonantam. So brahmacharis they they should not hear anything apart from Krishna consciousness. because everybody is hearing something somebody is hearing filmy filmy songs somebody is hearing uh, the uh, basically the vibrations of his family life and brahmacharis are hearing only krishna katha from the spiritual master so when somebody are krishna... listening to instagram somebody facebook somebody youtube so many things yeah. yes bro Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube also, Prabhu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on those, but on those channels, you can hear Krishna Katha also. So it's not like uh, you can completely reject them, but but it's better to be in physical association of devotees and hear directly from them. So that's why I suggested uh, Prabhuji and Prakya that you should select uh, three, four sources of hearing and just hear from them. For example. is alone as rompad maharaj radhanath maharaj prabhupad and amrendra prabhu they like so like this three four sources you select and you regularly hear from them from whom you aspire like you think that you are taking shiksha me personally i hear from anybody in iskon who is a guru and with whom i have a relationship for example recently last six seven months i have started hearing asit krishna maharaj also so it depends uh, like ultimately you should consult a spiritual master for that but right now you can hear from prabhupad and radhanath swami and rompad swami i think that will be nice so basically when we are going on internet then also our our vision should be like an horse like we should not watch on the right side what all videos are there only we should go to the uh, speakers which which we want to hear and just open those lectures and hear and in in full screen so that we don't get distracted by other videos so distraction is very very easy like in in kaliyuga you have you always 24 hours you are carrying this phone and one notification comes and you are distracted so like that's why a devotee has to mold his life in such a way that there is no distraction and he can do his spiritual activities with single pointed focus so these are small small practices which will increase your focus 
and which will uh, re like remove the mental problems which we face in kaliuga <clears throat> similarly the householders who have some license for sense gratification perform such acts with great restraint so even though there is license for sense gratification in household life but only that much which is required not more than that sex life intoxication and meat eating are general tendencies of human society but a regulated householder does not indulge in unrestricted sex life and other sense gratification marriage on the principles of religious life is therefore current in all civilized human society because that is the way for restricted sex life this restricted unattached sex life is also a kind of yajna because the restricted householder sacrifices his general tendency towards sense gratification for higher transcendental life So today I asked a question to Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, how should we practice? He was saying that if you are, if you are able to chant thirty-two rounds instead of sixteen rounds, then you should get the same happiness which you get, which you experience when you receive some money in your account. So generally, when when we receive the salary, right, ten thousand or one lakh, we we receive a subtle happiness. We think, okay, now like uh, there is a subtle happiness, right? but that happiness we should receive only when we are chanting more like we should never be focused on the money which we have <clears throat> money money we should donate actually uh, regularly as a grahastha we should give charity so when like we should have this hankering and desire that when we will chant 64 rounds for example previously on every festival i i tried to chant 64 rounds and now like in govardhan at least i'm trying to chant 32 every day so so like this we have to aspire we have to think that how will i increase my attraction for krishna how will i increase my purification how will i become pure when will i be, when will that come uh, when will that day come when i will become pure kabhi habe kabhi habe amar se dino bol liya so when will that day come when i will have attraction for the lotus feet of krishna and i can fix my consciousness on them <clears throat> so like this uh, maharaj was saying that uh, like in grahastha also ultimately if there is no uh, like if there is no taste of krishna consciousness then grahastha life is useless actually <clears throat> because grahastha life is also should be meant for cultivating spiritual understanding and uh, spiritual understanding means uh, that there should be bhajan morning evening i think in the 13 chapter we will read when in the in the last module in one of the verses in purports propat say that <clears throat> like uh, in grahastha life we should worship the deity and we should uh, the family should come together and do uh, hari krishna mahamantra kirtan morning and evening and that way like the entire family is absorbed in krishna so so always there is this positive taste of krishna consciousness so i am also experiencing i have spent uh, last 5 months in bangalore so like i i whenever i got opportunity in the evening i used to sing some bhajan two three bhajans and uh, either uh, you were there or uh, college preachers were there so somebody used to be there so this should be our program even bhakti vinod thakur also used to sing that uh, there have been so many years which i have wasted in the service of wicked people now let me let me chant the holy name now let me cultivate this taste for doing bhajan so for in grahastha life it's it's very important to to basically keep your sadhana good and to keep the good association some preaching is going on some some uh, exchanges based on krishna katha is going on it's very very important because uh, the responsibility is more even right you have to maintain the family you have to maintain other people so there is should be a constant flow of krishna katha <clears throat> krishna katha amrita yeah tava katha amritam tapta jeevanam श्रवणमंगलम श्रीमदाथ bhuvi kridanti e bhuri dana so krishna katha is the solution for anything actually if you get in the association of uh, devotees just put krishna and spiritual master in the center and everything will be sorted 
like all the consciousness will be elevated. Okay. Twenty-seventh verse. Sarvani Indriya Karmani Prana Karmani Chapare Atma Samyam Yoga No Jubati Yana Deepite. Others who are interested in achieving self-realization through control of the mind and senses offer the functions of all the senses and of life breath as oblations into the fire of the controlled mind. Yeah. The yoga system conceived by Patanjali is referred to herein in the Yoga Sutra of Patanjali. The soul is called Pratyagatma and Paragatma. As long as the soul is attached to sense enjoyment, it is called Paragatma. But as soon as the same soul becomes detached from such enjoy- sense enjoyment, it is called Pratyaga. So right now we are not able to distinguish between body and soul like because of the uh, because of the subtle attachments of the mind with the body. So once those subtle attachments are dissolved, then we will be able to perceive the soul different from the body. And that's why like I'm also on, not on that level. And that's why I keep coming to Raja and doing Parikramas, taking association. And I try to prioritize the bhajan also. With all of you, I try to, like, whenever we are chanting, we I prioritize charity, chanting and taking association of senior devotees, sannyasis. So, because we have to somehow come to that level uh, where we are able to distinguish the soul from the body. That bhakti rasa will ultimately flow, start flowing like a waterfall when you will reach that stage. So Brahma Bhuta stage is just the starting. Prabhupada writes in the purport that that is the that is the best stage to start practicing devotional service where you can engage all your senses in devotional service. And you can ex- through all your senses you can experience the bhakti rasa. So that is that is there. So that's why we have to come to that platform at least. And then we can go to the like Paramatma and Bhagavad. Bhagavad. <clears throat> the soul is subjected to the functions of 10 kinds of air at work within the body. And this is perceived through the breathing system. The Patanjali system of yoga instructs one on how to control the functions of the body's air in a technical manner. So that ultimately all the functions of the air within become favorable for purifying the soul of material attack. According to this yoga system, Pratyagatma is the ultimate goal. This Pratyagatma is withdrawn from activities and matter. The senses interact with the sense objects like the ear for hearing, eyes for seeing, nose for smelling, tongue for tasting and hand for touching. And all of them are thus engaged in activities outside the self. They are called the functions of the Pranavayu. The Apanvayu goes downwards. Vyanvayu acts to shrink and expand. Samanvayu adjusts the equilibrium. Udan Vayu goes upwards and when one is enlightened, one engages all these in searching for self-realization. Yeah. So ultimately, the Vayu should float upwards towards towards your mind. And Pran Vayu is situated, Kapha Vata Pitta is situated in your heart. And it, they are actually, they are the seat for the soul to reside. So if Kapha Vata Pitta are aligned, then the soul is sitting happily within these three years. And then you will not get any disease. And that's why like these days in every Iskand temple, Brahmacharis do yoga also for half an hour. Because whatever we are doing is impure in this Kali Yoga. The grain which we are eating, pollution is there. <clears throat> so many mental challenges are there. So that's why yoga is important to control our mind and senses. And then it is easier to con- to practice devotional service with, this, with that controlled mind. So yoga is not the goal. Goal is to like perform devotional service. So yeah, whatever things we can do to, to facilitate that we should do. Dravi Yagya Stapu Yagya Yoga Yagya Sathapari Swatya Yagya Yagya Shas Yataya Samsita Vrata. Having accepted strict laws, some become enlightened by sacrificing their positions and others by performing severe austerities. Practicing the yoga with full mysticism or by studying the Vedas to advance in transcendental knowledge. So sacrifice is important. Like either we should like we should give in charity, we should sacrifice our material positions, or we should be austere. There are many grastas who take only once a day. 
Prasadam, Taragwan Maharaj says in his lecture. So this is austerity, like we have tuned our uh, like subtle body and gross body in such a way that we have minimized our material needs. And even practicing the yoga is also sacrifice. And doing Shastra study is also sacrifice. Yeah, Prabhjit Rao, you want to read the purport? Yes, Prabhupada. These sacrifices may be fitted into various divisions. There are persons who are sacrificing their possessions in the form of charity. In India, the rich mercantile community or princely orders from various kinds of charitable institutions like Dharma Shala, Anshetra, Athiti Shala, Anathyale, and Vidya Peet. In other countries, too, there are many hospitals, old age homes, and similar charitable foundations. Made for distributing food, education, and medical treatment, free to the poor. All these charitable activities are called Dravya Maya Yajna. There are others who, for higher elevation in life, or for promotion to higher planets within the universe, voluntarily accept many kinds of strategies such as Chandrayana or Chaturmasya. These processes entail severe walls for conducting life under certain rigid rules. For example, under the Chaturmasya wall, the candidate does not shave for four months during the year, July to October. He does not eat certain food, not does not eat twice in a day or does not leave home. Such sacrifice of the comforts of life is called tapomaya yajna. There are still others who engage themselves in different kinds of mystic yogas, like the Patanjali system for merging into the existence of the absolute or hut yoga or ashtang yoga for particular perfections. And some travel to all the sanctified places of pilgrimage. All these practices are called yoga yajna. Sacrifice for a certain type of perfection in the material world. There are others who engage themselves in the studies of different Vedic literatures, specifically the Upanishads and Vedanta Sutras or the Sankhya philosophy. All of these are called Swadhyaya Yajna or engagement in the sacrifice of study. All these yogis are faithfully engaged in different types of sacrifice and are seeking a higher status of life. Krishna consciousness, however, is different from these because it is the direct service of the Supreme Lord. Krishna consciousness cannot by attained, cannot be attained by any one of the above mentioned types of sacrifice, but can be attained only by the mercy of the Lord and his bona fide devotee. Therefore, Krishna consciousness is transcendental. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, Rahu, can you explain your understanding? Prabhuji, this is what I have said that there are many sacrifices. और मतलब बहुत टाइप के धर्मशाला होती हैं जैसे चैरिटेबल होते हैं जैसे धर्मशाला और अन्य क्षेत्र अतिथिशाला और अनाथालय और प्रभु जी इसमें चतुर्मास के बारे में बताया गया है कि चतुर्मास होता है कि जिसमें चार महीने तक प्रभु जी मतलब कोई शेविंग नहीं करनी होती है और दो बार दिन में खाना भी नहीं होता और प्रभु जी इसमें और मिस्टिक योगा के बारे में बताया जैसे अष्टांग योग या हट योगा बट प्रभु जी जो कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस है वो जो इन ऊपर बताया गया वो अटेन नहीं कर सकते वो सिर्फ भगवान की मर्सी और उनके बोनाफाइड डिवोटीज के द्वारा ही अटेन करी जा सकती है प्रभु जी इसलिए प्रभु जी कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस जो है वो ट्रांसजेंडेंटल है बट दीज एक्टिविटीज कैन लाइक पे व पाथ फॉर यू बिकॉज दीज एक्टिविटीज विल इंक्रीज योर पायस क्रेडिट सो डेट वे लाइक द लाइफ विल बी मोर पीसफुल Otherwise, we are just struggling with our own diseases, with our own things, right? Because the lower modes are acting. So, if you are engaged in these sacrifices, like maybe not dedicate your life on them, but whatever possible, you should do. Like, for example, going to pilgrimage, because living in city life, it's always some uh, some unknown coverings come basically on our consciousness. So, if you go for pilgrimage, you make a routine program. 
for example, uh, for last six years, every four months I I take out some time, fifteen days, twenty days. I go to Vrindavan, go over there. So <clears throat> you should make a routine program. So these things will purify you. But when you go there, you should hear from sadhus. You should make relationships with sadhus, and you should serve them whatever way you can serve. You should serve them. Yeah. So basically, these things increase our piety. So when we are when we take birth in this material world, generally our piety and impiety are fixed at the time of birth, and based on that, our our breaths are also constant, and even our dukhas and sukhas are also constant, right? That is fixed from when we take birth. But as we proceed in our life, we increase or decrease piety and impiety, and based on that, our life changes. So like generally, like everything is controlled by Krishna based on our own vasanas. Based on our own pious and impious and bhakti credits, yeah. So it's very important to like prioritize these pious activities and uh, bhakti activities. Apane jyoti pranam prane panam tatha pare pran pana gati rudva prane yama parayana apare niyata hara pranan prane shujyoti. Still others who are inclined to the process of breath restraint to remain in trance. Practice by offering the movement of the outgoing breath into the incoming, and the incoming breath into the outgoing, and thus at last remain in trance, stopping all breathing. Others curtailing the eating process, offer the outgoing breath into itself as a sacrifice. So these are all different sacrifices, not directly Krishna conscious, but they are helping you to control your mind and senses and increase your piety. So next words. Sarve piyate yagya vidho yagya kshapita kalmasha yagya shishtamrita bhujo yanti brahma sanatanam All these performers who know the meaning of sacrifice become cleansed of sinful reactions and having tasted the nectar of the results of sacrifices, they advance towards the supreme eternal atmosphere. Yeah. So the importance of sacrifice is that, that your karma will be dissolved. So karma is also for... Four levels are there: prarabdha, prarabdha, puta, bija. Right. So at least the prarabdha karma will be will be uh, finished. Sinful papa will be. Uh, you can get rid of that. Obviously, kuta and bija are more subtle, and like only by very strong devotional service they can be they can be taken care of and lot of introspection. <clears throat> yeah. And once you are like uh, papa is dissolved, then at least you are able to taste the brahman brahman energy, brahmananda. Yeah. Purport, uh, Agya Mata, do you want to read? From the foregoing explanation of different types of sacrifice, namely sacrifice of one's possessions, study of the Vedas or philosophical doctrines, and performance of the yoga system, it is found that common aim of all is to control the, control the senses. Sense gratification is the root cause of material existence. Therefore, unless and until one is situated on a platform, apart from sense gratification, there is no chance of being elevated to the eternal platform of full knowledge, full bliss, and full life. This platform is the eternal atmosphere or Brahman atmosphere. All the above mentioned sacrifices help one to become cleansed of the sinful reactions of material existence. By this, by this advan advancement in life, not only does one become happy and opulent in this life, but also at the end, he enters into the eternal kingdom of God, either merging into the impersonal Brahman or associating with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. Mm -hmm. so, so Brahman means you are you have started uh, you have started the liberation process. You have started transcending the three modes of nature. <clears throat> so sense gratification directly blocks our spiritual progress. We have to understand this. Our Maharaj says that we are not attached to miseries, but we are attached to the sources of miseries. <clears throat> yeah. For example, we are attached to our parents. Like if we are too much attached, then they will for sure torment us. Those material attachments will torment us throughout our life. So 
it's not like we we will become renounced and we don't attach at all but things have to be taken up like a, a holistic picture has to be taken nayam lokosti ayagyasya kudonya guru sattama o best of the guru dynasty without sacrifice one can never live happily on this planet or in this life what then of the next so this is the crux of this section that without sacrifice nobody can live happily even a devotee who is practicing devotional service alone he will not be able to practice ekantiki harer bhakti rupadi eva kalpate श्रुति स्मृति पुराणादि पंचरात्रि की विधिना एकांत की हरि भक्ति उत्पादित कर सो सम सैक्रिफाइस हैज टू बी डन आइदर फॉर अदर डिवोटीज और एनीथिंग लाइक एवं बहु विधा यज्ञ विदता ब्रह्मणो मुखे कर्म जान विधि तान सर्वान एवं ज्ञात आ विमुक्ष से ऑल दीस डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ सैक्रिफाइस आर अप्रूव्ड बाय द वेदास एंड ऑल ऑफ देम आर बोर्न ऑफ डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ वर्क knowing them as such you will become liberated yeah different different types of sacrifice as discussed above are mentioned in the vedas to suit the different types of worker because men are so deeply absorbed in the bodily concept these sacrifices are so arranged that one can work either with the body with the mind or with the intellect but all of them are recommended for ultimately bringing about liberation from the body this is confirmed by the lord here with from his own mouth so everybody is not able to understand that he is not this body he is spirit soul right so krishna has given some concession for example yesterday we were reading 12 chapter so if you are not able to uh, if you are not able to fix your mind on krishna or intelligence on krishna then you should follow the regulative principles of bhakti rise up early in the morning attend mangala aarti chant your rounds prepare bhoga for the lord so these are all regulations of bhakti and if you are not able to do that all, then you should do you should work for krishna and you should give the fruits to krishna and uh, there are other activities also for example we do circumambulation of tulsi mara right that is also <clears throat> so, like a type of activity which purifies us or we do govardhan parikrama we do brindavan parikrama all these activities are basically uh, these are not directly soul activities but these are on the level of body but this will bring us to the soul platform that's what like propad is writing here because everybody is not on soul platform everybody doesn't understand that like uh, he can see the soul within the heart so so yeah so there are some preliminary activities some ritualistic activities for example we pay obeisances when we see the deities or devotees so by that our false ego becomes uh, becomes purified because right now there is like there is a lot of uh, attachment between the soul and the body the subtle body is very very attached so that subtle body gets purified when we pay our senses yeah 33rd श्रेयां द्रव्यमाया ज्ञान यज्ञ परंतप सर्व कर्माखिल पार्थ ज्ञाने परिसमाप्यते ओ चेस्टाइजर ऑफ द एनिमी द सैक्रिफाइस परफॉर्म्ड इन नॉलेज इज बेटर देन द मियर सैक्रिफाइस ऑफ मटेरियल पोजीशन आफ्टर ऑल ओ सन ऑफ विथ ऑल सैक्रिफाइस ऑफ वर्क कलमिनेट इन ट्रांसेंटल नॉलेज सो दिस इज ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड्स बिकॉज अल्टीमेटली द रिजल्ट ऑफ अ सैक्रिफाइस is determined by our consciousness and faith if you don't have faith then it will not give results for example when i speak if your receptivity is high then automatically krishna reciprocates more i can feel it but if you are distracted if you like uh, receptivity is not so much like uh, you are feeling bored then krishna will not in- give inspiration to me also to speak more so like this basically everything is governed by krishna so when we are chanting the holy name if we have good faith we have good consciousness and that we have to please krishna by this then we will experience a bliss in that chanting otherwise if we are just chanting for some sake like if we if you just want to uh, basically if you just want to get rid of some insecurities or we just want to enjoy some things then basically that the result of that chanting will not be so much so the duty can be done basically any service can be done on these three levels the lowest level is service is done done out of fear and 
the next level is service is done out of duty and the highest level is that service is done out of love so these are these are the evolution of faith so that's why faith is very very important even if you are doing some yagya at your house grah pravesh or something the faith that that fire is the mouth of vishnu that matters a lot if you have that faith and you dedicate your consciousness to that fire then automatically the results which you will experience uh, will be very drastic and everybody who participates in that yagya he will also experience that transformation of consciousness so only doing the activity is not sufficient consciousness behind the activity determines the potency of that activity so that is the essence of this verse very important verse this one also and the 31st verse also <clears throat> the purpose of all sacrifices is to arrive at the status of complete knowledge then to gain release from material miseries and ultimately to engage in loving transcendental service to the supreme lord krishna consciousness <clears throat> yeah. so real real engagement in loving transcendental service can happen only when we are above the material miseries so prabhupad is giving this sequence so first there should be complete knowledge that krishna is there and we are not this body we are spirit soul we are meant to serve krishna and then when we serve krishna then material miseries are taken away and when that anartha nivritti happens then that real love for transcendental service awakens nonetheless there is a mystery about all these different activities of sacrifice and one should know this mystery sacrifices sometimes take different forms according to the particular faith of the performer for example in like mahar loka jana loka like there are grahasthas who never engage in sex life they are always engaged in doing yagyas and they can easily see lord vishnu as fire and accepting different like the hands are extending from the fire and they are grabbing the grains they are grabbing the fruits so so that's why like sacrifice sometimes take different forms according to the particular faith of the performer so depending on the faith uh the results are very drastic for example when we got married like uh, so many devotees said that we have not experienced this type of marriage and so many saintly personality personalities were there uh, two three pro parties are two pro party circles were there so the aura is set by by that basically the consciousness of the yajman and conscious and how many sadhus you are serving in that in that marriage and you are taking it as a service to your spiritual master so that sets the consciousness that sets the platform for the yagya when once faith reaches the stage of transcendental knowledge the performer of sacrifices should be considered more advanced than those who simply sacrifice material possessions without such knowledge for without attainment of knowledge sacrifices remain on the material platform and bestow no spiritual benefit so everything is this purport is also very important because everything has to be done within our realization we have to act within our realization anasaktas vishayan yatharam upayunjita nirbandha krishna sambandhe yukta vairagya muchyate so papanchi gatiya budhiya hari sambandhi vastuna mumukshu bhi parityago palgu vairagya kathate so we have to practice yukta vairagya and as compared to palgu vairagya so yukta vairagya means we have this realization that how one one particular thing can be engaged in krishna service and if we don't have that realization if we don't have that intelligence then we should give those things to those to those highly krishna conscious people who can engage them in krishna service so like this if we have this knowledge that okay this particular sacrifice is krishna himself through the brahmana's mouth krishna is directly eating through this fire sacrifice krishna is directly taking the grains it is grains are not wasted some people say why are you throwing grains in the fire you can feed them to beggar <laughs> so all these arguments are going on but but actually what matters is the faith and the consciousness so manav seva madav seva right like people say why are you donating so much money in iskon why don't you open a like ashram for beggars and anathale right but that is not the highest service highest service is serving serving uh, krishna is devotees and and cows because they will expand if you give charity to them they will expand the movement of krishna consciousness and unless something is spiritualized and something finds its purpose there is no practical utility of that charity even if you give charity to open hospitals or to open anathale 
they will not feel their relationship with krishna they will not feel connected they will not feel the uh, they are basically every living entity is hank- hankering for this bhakti rasa they will not feel that <clears throat> so they will not uh, basically experience what every living entity is hankering for so so that's why we have to understand this we, our conviction should be very very strong in this that by giving charity to brahmanas that is the highest charity by giving charity to a vedaparga that is the best charity <clears throat> because they will distribute the charity to expand krishna consciousness movement so without the elevation of knowledge sacrifices are simply material activities when however they are elevated to the level of transcendental knowledge all such activities enter into the spiritual platform so depending on differences in consciousness sacrificial activities are sometimes called karma kanda fruitive activities and sometimes called gyana kanda knowledge in the pursuit of faith it is better when the end is knowledge yeah so depending on consciousness like if you are sacrificing your fruitive activities and it is karma kanda if you are sacrificing knowledge and like if you are cultivating knowledge that is gyana kanda so so this chapter is talking about transcendental knowledge in a in a very broad sense it is covering the entire gamut it is not covering only one thing okay so next verse next verse is also very important tad vidhi pranipate na pari prashne na sevaya upadekshanti te gyanam gyaninas tattva darshina just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master inquire from him submissively and render service unto him the self realized souls can impart knowledge unto you because they have seen the truth yeah so anybody wants to read ravi prabhu or akshat prabhu yes prabhu ji Yeah, but be a little louder. Yeah. Oh, good. The path of spiritual realization is undoubtedly, undoubtedly difficult. The Lord therefore advises us to approach a bona fide spiritual master in line of dis- disciplic, disciplic su- succession from the Lord Himself. No one can be a bona fide spiritual master without following the principle of dis- disciplic succession. the lord is the original spiritual master and a person in the disciplic succession can convey the message of the lord as it as it is to his dis, uh, disciple no one can be spiritually realized by manufacturing his own process as in the fashion of the foolish pretenders the bhagavatam says dharma tu sakshat bhagavatam parinatam the path of re- religion is directly enunciated by the lord therefore mental uh, speculation or dry arguments cannot help lead one to the right path not by independent study of books of knowledge can one progress in spiritual life one has to approach, approach a bona fide spiritual master to receive the knowledge such a spiritual master should be accepted in full surrender and one should serve the spiritual master like a menial servant without false prestige satisfaction of the self realized spiritual master is the secret of advancement in spiritual life inquiries and submission constitute the proper combination of spiritual understanding unless there is a submission and service inquiries from the learned spiritual master will not be effective one must be able to pass the test of the spiritual master and when he is the genuine dis- desire when he sees the genuine desire of the disciple he automatically blesses the disciple with genuine spirit, spiritual understanding in this verse both blind following and absurd inquiries are condemned not only should one hear submissively from the spiritual master but one should also get a clear understanding from him in submission service and inquiries a bona fide spiritual master is by nature very kind towards the dis, uh, disciple therefore when the student is submissive and is already ready to render service the reciprocation of knowledge and inquiries become perfect hari krishna hari krishna can you summarize your understanding yeah sure uh, so basically uh, in this purport uh, in this purport it has been said like uh, no one uh, like the uh, like one should 
get a succession from or like one should get uh, uh, reach to a bona fide you can take a pause and think about it like what do you want to speak maybe one minute you can think only two sentences you can speak yeah no need to fumble okay sure prabhuji <clears throat> uh like um, yeah so in this part it has been mentioned uh, one can be a spiritual master uh, through a disciplic su succession only and if one is getting into in touch of a spiritual master he has to uh, surrender him properly properly as in uh, through a proper question he should ask and do all like uh, no false uh, false prestige should be there like uh, no or prestige as well as uh, he should surrender him completely and that spiritual master has to follow a steps or a, a steps that that the supreme lord has defined he cannot uh, cannot become a spiritual master by his own step or following his own steps or by reading the books that he has, uh, that he read randomly that's yeah, all yeah. thank you thank you bro thank you and we should make inquiries and clarifications if a subject matter is not clear because inquiries uh, like reinstates our understanding yaj gyatva na punar moham evam yasasi pandava yena bhutani asheshani drakshasi atmani atho mai having obtained real knowledge from a self realized soul you will never fall again into such illusion for by this knowledge you will see that all living beings are but part of the supreme or in other words that they are mine so this knowledge is missing in this world like who so once we receive this knowledge from the spiritual master then we are able to see other souls as part and parcel of krishna api chedasi pape bhya sarve bhya papa krittama sarvam gyana plave neva riji nam santarishyasi even if you are considered to be the most sinful of all sinners when you are situated in the boat of transcendental knowledge you will be able to cross over the ocean of misery so only thing required is this mercy of the spiritual master like we don't need to worry about our sins at all today also maharaj was telling that we have our boat right this body is like a boat and uh, this material world is like a sea but but if a boat is put in the sea then do you think it will reach the shore what do you think am i audible can you repeat the question prabhu ji so the question is that suppose you are in a boat in a sea right so will you reach the shore if if the boat is put in the middle of a sea unless and until we don't over lose the oars we can not yeah we need a captain who know the path right we need a captain who know where to go to reach the shore so spiritual master is that captain so this boat is compared to our body and the captain karnadhar in bhagavatam in the first chapter uh, the spiritual master is referred to as karnadhar so the captain is a is a trained uh, is a, is trained by his own spiritual master is trained by another captain so that's why he knows the way he knows the working of the internal potency and the external potency he knows how to train a disciple and then through that training the 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 boat reaches the shore so we ourselves cannot row our boat to reach the shore like we have to take shelter of a self realized spiritual master <clears throat> and then we need we need not worry about anything that's why i'm uh, like uh, i'm urging all of you to be present in haridwar because this is a golden opportunity most of us will be there so yeah Whoever can make up should make and meet to participate. Yathe dhamsi samidho gne bhasmasud kurute arjuna gyanagni sarva karmani bhasmasat kurute tatha. As a blazing fire turns firewood to ashes, so Arjuna, so does the fire of knowledge burn to ashes all reactions to material activities. So just like in a in a room, right? Like there is lot of dust. lot of uh, darkness but uh, but if there is a window 
through which sunlight is coming and slowly slowly that darkness will reduce and when it's the noon time the room will be full of light so similarly once the fire of knowledge you are experiencing the bhakti rasa and you are experiencing the fire of knowledge then that fire can burn all the reactions of material activities so in nectar of devotion this example of snakes is given that when there is a forest fire then all the snakes of the forest are burnt up so this bhakti is like a forest fire which burns all the snakes of sinful reactions perfect knowledge of self and super self and of their relationship is compared here into fire this fire not only burns up all reactions to impious activities but also all reactions to pious activities turning them to ashes there are many stages of reaction reaction in the making reaction fructifying reaction already achieved and reaction a priori so this is prarabdha prarabdha sanchit all those things but knowledge of the constitutional position of the living entity burns everything to ashes <clears throat> when one is in complete knowledge all reactions both a priori and a posteriori are consumed in the vedas brihad aranyaka upanishad 4.4.22 district ubhe uhe vaise ete tarati amrita sadhu asadhuni one overcomes both the pious and impious reactions of work so sarva dharman paritejya maam ekam sharanam praja aham tvam sarva papebhyo moksha shami mashucha so when we surrender unto krishna then krishna takes responsibility of our sinful reactions so that is there so when we perform bhakti ultimately the entire subtle mind can be dissolved by by the bhakti shakti <clears throat> and uh, a similar verse is there in the 10th chapter also te shami vanu kampartham aham agyana jamtama nashyam me atma bhavasto gyan deepena vasuda so when the ignorance is burnt in the heart then automatically the lamp of krishna ignites in our heart so this is very important okay na hi gyanena sadrisham pavitram ih vidyate tat swayam yoga samsiddha kalena atmani vindati in this world there is nothing so sublime and pure as transcendental knowledge such knowledge is the mature fruit of all mysticism and one who has become accomplished in the practice of devotional service enjoys this knowledge within himself in due course of time yeah so so sukham kartum apyayam so when we practice devotional service it can be practiced with lot of happiness and joyfulness and we can see our self we can see the relationship of the soul and the super soul so once this so relationship with the super soul is established then automatically all our sinful reactions are burnt away and and in the starting stages we need proper guidance and good association of sadhus yeah. so simran mother you want to read uh, simran mother left anybody else hena mata ji or manish prabhu 38th words for put uh you have to uh, share uh, the no i can't project i am on phone 38th words fourth chapter Will you be able to read? Uh, mm, give me five, four, two minutes. Okay. Maybe next verse. Right. Okay. When we speak of transcendental knowledge, we do so in terms of spiritual understanding. As such, there is nothing so sublime and pure as transcendental knowledge. Ignorance is the cause of our bondage, and knowledge is the cause of our liberation. <laughs> very clear when the prabhupad purports are very very uh, they don't beat around the bush they just directly come to the point ignorance is the cause of our bondage and knowledge is the cause of our liberation this knowledge is a mature fruit of devotional service and when one is situated in transcendental knowledge he need not search for peace elsewhere for he enjoys peace within himself in other words this knowledge and peace culminate in krishna consciousness that is the last word in the bhagavad gita so just like a tree right like so we all have bhakti lata beech and when we like uh, when we nourish these seeds by hearing and chanting we just like for a seed we need proper amount of soil proper amount of sunlight then those seeds they fructify into buds they become saplings and slowly slowly they grow into a tree and then that tree also gives fruits so we so at that time our devotional services mature so those fruits are actually the devotees which we are able to create 
Prabhupada used to say that a Vaishnava is known by, uh, like a Vaishnava's potency is known by his potency to create devotees. How many Vaishnavas he has created. So you can read the next verse. I'll just read the shloka. Radhava labhate jnanam tatpara sanyate indriya jnanam labdhva varam shante vachirena digachati A faithful man who is dedicated to transcendental knowledge and who subdues his senses is eligible to achieve such knowledge. And having achieved it, he quickly attains the supreme spiritual peace. Yeah, you can read more. 39th verse for put. Yes, Hina Mataji, you are going to read? Yeah. I'm trying. Uh, can you tell me for the thing? 39th what? was 4th chapter. 39th. Okay. Uh, a faithful man who is dedicated to transcendental knowledge and who... Actually, my voice is not clear to me. Is it equal to... What is not clear? Voice, my voice. Yeah, yeah, your voice is uh, completely audible to me. Okay. You can A directly read the purport. Hmm? Yeah. You can directly read the purport. Okay, purport. Such, such knowledge in Krishna consciousness can be achieved by a faithful person who believes firmly in Krishna. One is called a faithful man who thinks that simply by acting in Krishna consciousness, he can attain the highest perfection. This faith is attained by the discharge of devotional service and by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Hare, Rama, Hare Hare, Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. <coughs> Which cleanses one's of all material dirt. Over and above this, one should control the senses. A person who is faithful to Krishna and who controls the senses can easily attain perfection in the knowledge of Krishna consciousness without belief. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Yeah, so this also this verse is also very important because this verse is uh, determining the qualifications of cultivating transcendental knowledge. So there are three qualifications. One is we should have faith. Second is we should control our senses. Yeah. And third is dedication. We should be dedicated to the transcendental law. And in the purport, I think Prabhupada is quoting this Shraddha, Shraddha Shabde verse. He is defining faith. Shraddha Shabde Vishwas kahe Sudrada Nishaya Krishna Bhakti Pahile Sarva Karma So one should have complete faith that by performing devotional service, everything else will be achieved in this life. For example, Prabhupada did not have any, like he, he had faith in the instruction of his spiritual master when he went to US. He did not have anything on his side. He did not have his age. He did not have disciples. He did not have material wealth to preach. He just went on the sake of fulfilling his, uh, fulfilling the instruction of his spiritual master. And only he had complete faith on the holy name. And just by that faith and just by that dedication, he felt so many times in distributing books in Delhi. And uh, like even when he reached US, his typewriter was stolen. He had to live with hippies in the Bowery. Like uh, who he could have spent all, all his life in Vrindavan, like peacefully chanting all his uh, like entire time. But he, he took that austerity to fulfill the instruction of his prison master. So many struggles came. But for first year in, in US also, he did not get any results. But after first year, immediately, like in next two years, he got 108 temples. And so many times uh, he, he started roaming around the world. So sometimes Krishna tests us, like when we have to, like now we have everything, like everything has been lived out by Prabhupada. Like this Bhagavad Gita is there, how to do Bhakti Vriksha is there. So many resources are there. Uh, like in, on, in Govardhan also there is an ISKCON, in Vrindavan also there is ISKCON. Now in Ayodhya also there is ISKCON. All the holy places also have ISKCON. So much potency is there of uh, like Krishna, Krishna Bhakti in these places. So everything we have, we just have to become instruments in the hands of Lord Chaitanya. 
and the mercy will flow through us to for others also. So these three, this is important verse. I always refer this verse. So these three things we have to cultivate: faith, dedication, and controlling ourselves. Okay. Today we will be able to complete the chapter. Very nice. Agyascha shraddha dhanascha samshayatma vinashyati nayam loko astina paro na sukham samshayatma na. But ignorant and faithless persons who doubt the revealed scriptures do not attain God consciousness. They fall down. For the doubting soul, there is happiness neither in this world nor in the next. So in the second chapter also, Krishna is using this compare and contrast technique. One who has faith, he is able to uh, cultivate transcendental knowledge. But one who is ignorant or faithless or always doubting, he falls down. He doesn't achieve happiness in this world or in the, or in the next world. There is a verse uh, in, the four, in the second chapter, right? Bhogashwarya prasakta anantaya parita cheta sam vyavsaya atmika buddhir samadhavna vidhiyate. So Krishna always tells that if you have faith, then you are able to do this. If you don't have faith, then you will not have, achieve happiness. So he is giving compare and contrast program. So what is the vidhi? What is the nishida? Everything is there. Purport. Out of many standard and authoritative revealed scriptures, the Bhagavad Gita is the best. Persons who are almost like animals have no faith in or knowledge of the standard revealed scriptures and some even though they have knowledge of or can cite passages from the revealed scriptures have actually no faith in these words. And even though others may have faith in scriptures like Bhagavad Gita, they do not believe in or worship the personality of God, Sri Krishna. Such persons cannot have any standing in Krishna consciousness. So you have to read Bhagavad Gita, you have to worship Krishna also because you have to live in a holy dham. So wherever Krishna is worshipped according to standard, that is a holy dham. For example, Prabhupada used to say that all the Iskon temples are non-different from Vaikuntha because Krishna is worshipped according to standards. There are offerings happening. There are five artis happening. And it is there. For example, some of you are taking association from Noida. Some of you are connected to Punjabi Vat. Some of you are con connected to Haridwar. So continue doing that. Because that will elevate your consciousness. <clears throat> and when you are, when you come back to your house, you read Bhagavad Gita, you try to apply Bhagavad Gita in your life. You, you make your home also temple. So you you fetch, you you receive the positive energy from the temple, and then you invest that positive energy to making your home a temple. So, so like this, a Vaishnava, wherever he, he resides, he makes that place automatically becomes a temple. Tirtham Kurvanti Tirthan. So you don't need to visit holy places if you are with a Vaishnava. Because wherever a Vaishnava goes, he creates that Tirtha. Yeah. All the above mentioned persons, those who have no faith and are always doubtful, make no progress at all. Men without faith in God and his revealed word find no good in this world nor in the next. For them, there is no happiness whatsoever. One should therefore follow the principles of revealed scriptures with faith and thereby be raised to the platform of knowledge. Only this knowledge will help one become promoted to the transcendental platform of spiritual understanding. In other words, doubtful persons have no status whatsoever in spiritual emancipation. One should therefore follow in the footsteps of great acharyas who are in the disciplic succession and thereby attain success. So, one may ask that Arjuna is always doubtful. Like, why is he doubtful? If others are recommending not to be doubtful. So Arjuna is put into my like the external potency of the Lord for our welfare so that he can ask questions and our doubts can be clarified. So that's why when we ask questions to spiritual master, we are recommended to be submissive. Like we should not be challenging because we should be we should be ready to let go of our misconceptions. If we are not ready to give, let go of our uh, let go of our misconceptions and attachments, then there is no use asking questions. Unless you want to uh, practice spiritual life and really want to dedicate to the instructions of the spiritual master, you should not ask the question. You should ask questions when you are really willing to receive from the spiritual master. So, so that way the doubts will be dissipated. Yeah. So in the morning also, our uh, Maharaj was telling that 
like uh, I, I think I told in the starting of the class that the the nectar which we experience by accumulating money, the same nectar we should experience when we chant more. For example, if we are chanting 16 rounds, how much how much excitement do we have for 32 rounds? For example, if there is 50,000 rupees in your account and now one lakh is going to come, so you will be excited. Oh, my account is going to increase by three times. So I will I will be more rich. So you will be excited. Your subtle body will be excited. So similarly, the similar excitement should be there for, for extra spiritual activities. Then, then we can understand that we are making spiritual progress. Otherwise, we are we are stuck where we are. So that attraction for hearing and chanting has to increase. Then only we are making spiritual progress. Okay. Yoga sanyasta karmadham jnana sanchinna samchayam atmavantam na karmani nibadnanti dhananjaya One who acts in devotional service, renouncing the fruits of his actions and whose doubts have been destroyed by transcendental knowledge, is situated factually in the self. Thus, he is not bound by the reactions of work, O conqueror of riches. Yeah. So, a devotee, he is always acting as an instrument of Krishna. And he, whatever results he is getting, he is again offering them back to Krishna. He is not getting attached to the results. And in that way, his doubts have been cleared because he is in direct touch with Krishna. He is experiencing Krishna all the time. So such a person is totally self-satisfied and all the doubts are dissipated by the transcendental knowledge. Yeah. Anybody wants to read the purport? Arti Mata, you want to read? 41st verse. Or Manish Prabhu? My voice is audible or not? Yes, yes, yes. Jo Manish Bhagavad Gita is Sikhshaka, Usi Rupme Palan Karta has Jis Rupme Bhagavan Sekhish Nadithi, to Bahadir Bikan Kiki Pasa Samas, the Sanshayon Sebukta Hojata. Punata Krishna Pavana Pavita Mudeki Karan, Ushishri Bhagavan Se Ansha Rupme, Apanis Haruka Jan Pahilevi Hojata. Ateva. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Yeah, so we just have to continue following the instructions of Bhagavad Gita and our spiritual master as it is. Then automatically our our ignorance will be removed. And then we will realize that we are this, we are not this body, we are spirit soul, and we are part and parcel of Krishna. Tasmada jnana sambhutam, ritastham jnana asinatmana, chitvenam samshayam yogam, atisto, 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 bharata. Therefore, the doubts which have arisen in your heart out of ignorance should be slashed by the weapon of knowledge. Armed with yoga, O Bharata, stand and fight. Yeah. So, I'll just, like, I can take, we can take a two minute break and then we, I'll read the purport of this. Yes.
Okay. So I think we can do like a, a group discussion today. So I just want to ask all of you, Pragyamata is not there, but like, have you experienced any purification while doing Krishna consciousness? Because this chapter is all about cultivating transcendental knowledge. And once transcendental knowledge is there, then all your ignorance will be destroyed. All your doubts will be dispelled. So have you felt that uh, up till now while you are practicing Krishna devotional service? And if yes, then uh, can you can you describe a little bit? One instance maybe when you felt that. Okay, Prabhjit Rao, is it clear? Yes, Prabhuji. Purification is not clear, Prabhuji. Ah, yes. Maybe one instance where you felt your consciousness became elevated or you felt the purification. Prabhuji, tell me, let's start. Yes, tell me if you have any mind. Prabhuji, I mean, it was like that when I told you, I mean, I told you, I mean, 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 प्रभु जी जैसे ही हमने धीरे धीरे मतलब हमारा कीर्तन में टेस्ट आने लगा और थोड़ा प्रभु जी मतलब क्यूरियोसिटी बढ़ने लगी कि और बात जानना है कृष्णा के बारे में राजा रानी के बारे में प्रभु जी जैसे धीरे धीरे मतलब क्लासेस देते रहे भगवत गीता की शिशांत प्रभु जी की तो थोड़ा प्रभु जी क्लियर होता गया तो वो अंदर से नॉलेज भी हल्की हल्की आने लगी कि मतलब कैसे कैसे होता है प्रभु जी वो चीज़ें फिर काफ़ी हद तक अभी सही हुई हैं मतलब पहले तो हम बहुत लेट लेट उठते थे तो अभी थोड़ा मतलब टाइम पे सुबह उठने लगे हैं साढ़े पाँच छः बजे तक तो जी ये चेंज आया था हमें मतलब ये चीज़ हमें फील हुई थी जो सही हुई है वेरी वेरी नाइस नाइस थैंक यू प्रभु थैंक यू सब अच्छे से पकड़ के रखना है मतलब भक्तों की भक्तों की जो रस्सी होती है उसको हम जितने अच्छे से पकड़ के रखेंगे उतनी जल्दी हम कुएं से बाहर निकल पाएंगे तो धीरे धीरे मतलब ये मतलब मैंने तो पर्सनली पहले सबसे पहले यूएस में मैंने कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस स्टार्ट किया था तो सबसे पहला तो यही था मेरे बैक में और नेक में बहुत पेन रहता था बहुत पहले से और जब से मैंने ये जल्दी उठना रात में टाइम से सोना खुद से कुकिंग करना खुद का खाना और फिर चैंटिंग करना डिवोटीज के घर जाना प्रसाद लेना और सारा वो गायब भी हो गया एक तरह से जो वो स्ट्रेस था बैक पेन नेक और उसके बाद फिर वो ब्लिस बढ़ता गया और मन करता था डिवोटीज के साथ ही रहने का इतना लव दिया उन्होंने इतना कंपैशन दिया कि उनके घर जाके चैंट करने का मन करता था और कहीं बाहर चैंटिंग में इतना टेस्ट नहीं आता था दो तीन माला में करता था खुद से लेकिन वहाँ जाके तो पूरा दिन भी रह सक रहने का मन करता था और पूरा दिन आराम से फेस्टिवल वाले दिन तो पूरी पच्चीस पच्चीस माला कर रहे हैं आराम से कोई टेंशन नहीं इतना एलिवेशन फील होता था मतलब ऑल दो देवर ओनली लाइक डिवोटीज स्परिचुअल मास्टर वॉज नॉट देर और अभी रिसेंटली ये हुआ था कि जब मैं पहली बार यहाँ इस्कॉन गोवर्धन में आया था तो एक अलग सा ही एक वाइब्स मैंने फील करी यहाँ पे मतलब एक सटल वे में बहुत ज़्यादा नरिशमेंट <laughs> फील किया एक्चुअली यहाँ पे तमाल कृष्ण महाराज की पर्सनल प्रेजेंस फील की मैंने और उसके बाद से मेरा उनसे भी रिलेशनशिप सटल लेवल पर बन गया ऑल दो मैं कभी मिला नहीं उनसे मैं उन्हें जानता नहीं हूँ लेकिन संभाव वो कहते हैं ना कि जब इनिशिएशन ले लेते हैं तो प्रभुपात के जो सारे डिसाइपल्स हैं उनसे हमारा रिलेशनशिप बन जाता है वी आर फॉर्मली कनेक्टेड टू द डिसाइपिक सक्सेशन टू दू प्रभुपात तो वो एक हाई एलिवेशन मैंने फील किया और लेटली जो लेटेस्ट है वो कल मैंने एक क्वेश्चन पूछा था महाराज से उन्होंने जब आंसर किया था तो एक बहुत ही मतलब ऐसा लगा मेरे को कि अंदर से बहुत एक जो कालिक थी वो एकदम से डिजॉल्व हो तो मतलब ऐसा होता ही है मतलब साधु संग में जहाँ पे कृष्णा चारों ओर हैं एंड वेन यू आर हम्बल Immediately, like you can see the purification happening at certain level. Yeah, Manish, Prabhu, आपको कुछ share करना? ठीक है. हाँ, मैं. Yes. Yes, Prabhu. हाँ, पहले पहले ये होता था कि मतलब अपना कर्म किए जा, हल्के चिंता ना करें. ये केवल केवल एक थ्योरी में रहता था लेकिन प्रैक्टिकली ये हो गया कि हमारे करियर के बाद जॉब करता हूँ जॉब छूट जाता है इन बिटवीन मैं लास्ट एक कल तक कल नहीं देखता हूँ कि मेरे पास क्या समस्या आने वाली है कितना डीप समस्या हो जाएगी 
सब लगता है कि नहीं सब ठीक हो जाएगा इस तरफ पैसे तो ये सब फीलिंग गीता उतर के पढ़ने से या आपके कहने के मतलब एक जो इसकॉन जैसी जो संस्था होती है हाँ वो प्योरिटी के साथ चीजों को जो रेंडर करती है तो वो कहीं ना कहीं इफेक्टिव होता है उनका रेंडरेंस उनका इफेक्टिव होता है कि नहीं ऐसे रहा जा सकता है ज्यादा परेशान होने की जरूरत नहीं तो ये सब चीजें तो आती रहेंगी तो डाउट थैंक यू प्रभु थैंक यू वेरी मच मतलब एक केयर फ्रीनेस महसूस होती है क्योंकि हम हमेशा कृष्णा से कनेक्टेड फील करते हैं जब डिवोडीज की मर्सी इस कॉन के थ्रू फ्लो करती है और हमें फिर टेंशन नहीं होती ऑल दो बहुत सारी चीजें हैं जो हमारी लाइफ में अनसर्टेनिटीज रहती हैं और प्रॉब्लम्स भी आ जाती हैं लेकिन जब हम मर्सी को रिमेंबर करते हैं और डिवोडीज की टच में आते हैं जैसे हम लोग साथ में सुन रहे हैं तो मेरे को भी मतलब कई चीजें मैं सोच रहा था खासकर जो वृंदावन वगैरह में ना एनर्जी ज्यादा होती है तो कभी कभी अगर हम कृष्णा को नहीं रिमेंबर कर पाते तो एंगजाइटीज भी ज्यादा खाने लगती है एकदम से लेकिन जब डिवोडी एसोसिएशन में जब हम आते हैं तो उस मर्सी से हम बहुत ही होपफुल हो जाते हैं कि कृष्णा विल टेक केयर मतलब जस्ट डिपेंड ऑन कृष्णा तो वही है वो आपने बहुत अच्छे से बताया थैंक यू प्रभु प्रज्ञा माता जी आप आपको शेयर करना चाहेंगे मतलब हम डिस्कस कर रहे हैं कि ट्रांसेंडेंटल नॉलेज से हमारी हमारे सारे डाउट्स डिसिपेट हो जाते हैं सारी इग्नोरेंस डिसिपेट हो जाती है और सोल का सुपर सोल से रिलेशन एस्टेब्लिश हो जाता है तो कभी आपने पूरे प्रोसेस में फील किया ऐसा कि आपका खुद का प्योरिफिकेशन हुआ मतलब कभी आपकी कॉन्शियसनेस एलिवेट हुई तो हम सब लोग डिस्कस कर रहे हैं यस प्रभु जी हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी यस प्रभु जी एक एक ये हुआ है कि मतलब बार बार याद आता है कि हम आत्मा है और हम बॉडी नहीं है हम आत्मा है तो अटैच मतलब हर चीज टेम्परेरी है तो जब भी कहीं ऐसा लगता है कि हाँ थोड़ा अटैच हो रहे हैं तो ऑटोमेटिकली ऐसा आ जाता है कि हम लोग बॉडी हैं और कुछ फायदा नहीं है यहाँ पे अटैचमेंट रखे तो ये चीज बार बार याद रहती है कहीं ना कहीं तो इससे मतलब जो भी प्रॉब्लम्स आती हैं वो हम इजीली थोड़ा मतलब फेस कर लेते हैं चाहे वो कैसी भी प्रॉब्लम क्योंकि ऐसा लगता है कि हम तो सोल ही है वेरी नाइस तो आपका बजर बजने लगता है बेसिकली जैसे आप किसी भी चीज से अटैच होता सही है थैंक यू माता जी हिना माता जी आपको भी कुछ शेयर करना है या फिर जस्ट पेपोर्ट पढ़ लेते हैं और ठीक है तो आज हम फोर्थ चैप्टर फिनिश कर लेंगे मैं कुछ क्वेश्चन शेयर करूंगा माता जी आप शेयर कर दीजिएगा तो आप लोग क्वेश्चन आंसर कर सकते हैं तो दिस इज अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल चैप्टर स्पेशली द लास्ट सेक्शन एंड द फर्स्ट सेक्शन Yes, it how transcendental knowledge dissipates all of our doubts, all of our ignorance, and and it establishes us in the self. And there are many other spiritual techniques, uh, consciousness behind the activity, faith behind the activity. Those are very important. Yeah. So I'll just read the purport of forty-second verse. The smart of jnana sambhutam, ritstham jnana sinatmana, chitvenam samshayam yogam, atis thotis se Bharata. therefore the doubts which have arisen in your heart out of ignorance should be slashed by the weapon of knowledge armed with yoga o bharata stand and fight the yoga system instructed in this chapter is called sanatan yoga or eternal activities performed by the living entity this yoga has two divisions of sacrificial actions one is called sacrifice of one's material possessions another is called knowledge of self yeah so two, two divisions of sacrificial actions Which is pure spiritual activity. So we have to do both the things. We have to give up the material things, and we have to adopt the spiritual things. Anukulas se sankalpa, pratikulas se varjan. If sacrifice of one's material possessions is not dovetailed for spiritual realization, then such sacrifice becomes material. But one who performs such sacrifices with a spiritual objective or in devotional service makes a perfect sacrifice. when we come to spiritual activities we find that these are also divided into two namely understanding of one's own self or one's constitutional position and the truth regarding the supreme personality of god one who follows the path of bhagavad gita as it is can very easily understand these two important divisions of spiritual knowledge so we are we start discovering about our self also what is our spiritual nature what is spiritual self and we start understanding the sachidan and vigra form of the lord also For him, there is no difficulty in obtaining perfect knowledge of the self as part and parcel of the Lord. 
and such understanding is beneficial for such a person can easily understand the transcendental activities of the lord in the beginning of this chapter the transcendental activities of the lord were discussed by the supreme lord himself one who does not understand the instructions of the gita is faithless transcendental activities of the lord were like rendering bhagavad gita to vivaswan and uh, like yada yada idharmasya he comes he descends to this material world 5000 years back he came to kill kansa and all the kings in the battle of kurukshetra so all these are real realities these are not mythology these are not stories so when we when we hear these things with faith then basically we become purified otherwise we are misusing the fragmental independence awarded to him by the lord so faith is what is intrinsic to the soul so faith we through our free will we can cultivate this way in spite of such instructions one who does not understand the real nature of the lord as eternal blissful all knowing personality of god is certainly fool number 1 ignorance can be removed by gradual acceptance of the principles of krishna consciousness krishna consciousness is awakened by different types of sacrifices to the demigods sacrifice to brahman brahman sacrifice in celibacy in household life in controlling the senses in practicing mystic yoga in penance in foregoing material possessions in studying the vedas and in partaking of the social institution called varnashrama dharma all of these are known as sacrifice and all of them are based on regulated action but within all these activities the important factor is self realization one who seeks that objective is the real student of bhagavad gita but one who doubts the authority of krishna falls back one is therefore advised to study bhagavad gita or any other scripture under a bona fide spiritual master with service and surrender a bona fide spiritual master is in the disciplic succession from eternal from time eternal and he does not deviate at all from the instructions of the supreme lord as they were imparted millions of years ago to the sun god from whom the instructions of bhagavad gita have come down to the earthly kingdom one should follow the path of bhagavad gita as it is expressed in the gita itself and beware of self interested people after personal aggrandizement who deviate others from the actual path the lord is definitely the supreme person and his activities are transcendental one who understands this is a liberated person from the very beginning of his study of bhagavad gita Hmm. So the most important sentence is, all of these are known as sacrifice, and all of them are based on regulated action. But within all these activities, the important factor is self-realization. So the consciousness to, behind doing these sacrifices matters a lot. So Prabhupada is summarizing the entire chapter in this purport. We should have complete faith, and with that faith, we should. read bhagavad gita under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master and then all of our doubts will be dissolved and then we will be, we will achieve self realization <clears throat> and this hearing of bhagavad gita from a bona fide source is equivalent to hearing directly from krishna okay any questions Uh, any thought? I think today's session was good. Believe that is that. Any reflection? Okay, then we'll meet uh, next next uh, next Sunday. next sunday i will not sure whether we'll be able to meet or not so next two sundays uh, maharaj yatra is there so we might not be able to conduct this vakti shastri so we'll start the fifth chapter maybe after three weeks so okay thank you all for coming and joining and then giving us hari krishna prabhu hari krishna giving the inspiration to speak